Alison Brie, I know you hadn't read Apples Never Fall, the book, before reading the scripts. So what about the scripts made you want to read the book? Gosh, well, <laughs> it was Amy. It was Amy Delaney. It was Love at First Sight. I was um, very taken, if I'm being totally honest, by the third episode, Amy's episode, and kind of the history of the character and what everything she had been through emotionally and and then it's sort of and you start to realize that every episode was that way really fleshing out these characters and this family and nothing was what it seemed or things were what they seemed but much more complicated and detailed and of course the juicy mystery of it all I think the mystery of it made me want to read the book mm. And everything I'm saying about the writing in those episodes made me want to do the show. That's a good balance, right? Because you want to see like what happened to Joy, <laughs> right? But then it's like, I also care about my character. <laughs> yeah, do you notice I said nothing about Joy at all, but <laughs> definitely care about what, she happened, dead, to what happened to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. cared about what happened to her. But really, I mean, reading it, it is the family dynamic. I think that's the crux of the whole show is that you're like, tune into this mystery, but stay for the, you know, effed up, am I allowed to curse on this podcast? For the, for the effed want. up family <laughs> dynamic, because we can all relate to that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, I feel like Amy is also so unlike most of the characters that fans know you for, because, you know, she's not very goal oriented or very focused or determined on anything really. Um, and you know, she's just very breezy, casual, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. So as an actor, how did that stretch you or tap into muscles you haven't used in a while? It was exciting. I think it was the emotional depth that was really fun for me to tap into in a new way. And, and because Amy as a character and Amy as a, you know, as a person, is so in the moment and of the moment. And she is driven by her emotions in a way that is so different from any character I've played before. Every other character I've played seems to have a, I mean, every other character that exists probably has better control over their emotions than Amy does. And I sort of really ex uh, respect that about her. Um, so that was part of the challenge. I mean, those two things, I think it was like constant mining of myself, my own emotional pool <laughs> to see how deep those waters ran. And then the flip side was just being very present and trying to kind of experience the things that were happening the way that the character would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is definitely someone who seems like she wants to be in touch with her emotions, but she doesn't really have the tools because of the way she was brought up like that family did not talk about feelings <laughs> definitely I know no one in the Delaney family takes Amy seriously but mm -hmm. I do think that she is like close to being one of the healthiest people in the family like I yes. actually think it's really admirable the amount that she wants to talk about things this is something that nobody in the family does and um and yeah no she doesn't she has no control over uh <laughs> her emotions she's sort of like guided by the every whim that she feels um but that said I she seems to have a lot more joy in her life I mean no pun intended uh than than a lot of her siblings do by nature of rebelling against the way she was raised um I think you know the competition factor is such a big part of this family dynamic when your father is your coach. Um, so much of his love <laughs> seems dependent on winning and not losing, you know? Uh, so I think that sort of like has been the uphill battle for all of the Delaney children. And a big part of the process of the show was all of us discussing together kind of the different experience that each Delaney child had with their father and with their mother, how all of those relationships are different, how the relationship between all the siblings are different. And that was really fun just exploring the nuance of all of that. Yeah. Because like everyone, like especially with siblings, like you all have a different 
a perspective on your childhood like and different relationships among your parents like you might have like a great relationship with your dad but your sibling might not <laughs> definitely definitely and and that we especially we would talk about kind of the difference between the elder siblings and the younger siblings mm -hmm. like jake lacy and RJ, i think those characters troy and amy also genuinely experienced a different father than Logan and Brooke in a lot of ways because Stan was minimally evolving and changing a little bit in his life. And also those kids were just, they were just younger. They had blocked more out, you know, yeah. the older they had, siblings. They had it easier. The of memory, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, maybe like, you know, at first blush, you might not call her brave, but like, you know, like you were just saying, like, you know, she was rebelling against the family, like the family business of tennis. So I feel like that is a brave act for her. Like she's defying what her family or her dad, especially wants her to do. Like she, she definitely felt like she gave tennis like the, the least like amount of time than the other siblings did. <laughs> definitely. Amy does not play tennis mm -hmm. anymore. I feel like she plays family but she is, yeah. is does not play for fun i i do think she's brave and and i stand by i mean I, I, some of my early discussions with melanie marnich our, our showrunner creator um were about how amy is the biggest rebel in the family because the family is so goal oriented these kids have been raised that way in constant competition with one another amy at this moment where we meet her in her life seems all about release releasing goals releasing expectations she's living with a bunch of 20 year olds she doesn't seem to have a job you know in some ways it's 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 a lot of privilege you know she has a rich brother who seems to be bankrolling a lot of her lifestyle but there's a bravery in her sincerity you know there's a bravery in the unabashed way that she expresses herself and her spirituality knowing that the family is going to constantly berate her and make fun of it she's still gonna host a hope circle because she genuinely believes that it might help find her mother I think that's great yeah she's eternally optimistic so she, she yeah. she's optimistic and she also like fears the worst like my mom is dead <laughs> Let me call everybody. Well, I'm glad that you said that because I always say Amy's an optimist. She's an optimist. And then people are like, she's a catastrophist. She freaks out the most. I was like, as Brooke would say, yeah, but two <laughs> things can be true. Yeah. I do think it's one of those things that's just like, doesn't that push and pull exist in all of us in different ways? Like we, these contradictory things, you know, we talk about it a lot in terms of, I feel like now I'm like on a weird tangent, but in terms of like how people are extroverts or introvert. I'm an introverted extrovert, you know, you can be both I don't know. I don't like know. in certain you can circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that in life, Amy strives for positivity and has taken all these steps through meditation and therapy and yoga um, and just her way of living to, to maintain positivity and optimism. And the reason she does that is because she jumps to the worst places. She does catastrophize things. And that's just sort of like another facet of her personality. Mm -hmm. um, well, yes. Yeah, so the third episode is Amy's big episode. And we learn a lot about her. And it opens with a flashback to 2008 after she has just dropped out of college. And it's such a lovely scene between you and Annette Benning. Like Joy is comforting her. And, you know, she's the first one to know about this. What was it like shooting that scene and also just wearing that wig? <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was incredible shooting that scene. I have admired Annette as an actress for as long as I can remember. And, you know, she couldn't have been more generous and giving as an actor to actor, you know, when you're shooting emotional scenes, it's like, it's so important to be able to take the space you need to get wherever you need to get emotionally and um it was really beautiful the process in doing that was really beautiful with Annette and also with our director Don Shadforth who had Annette and I come in um weeks before we shot that scene before we started shooting that episode and we came in and did some rehearsals where you know we like played out the beat before that scene we played out the night before of like um 
Amy calling Joy from the hospital and what that conversation would be like. This is such a luxury, I feel like, in the world of television. I have never had rehearsal time like this. It reminded me more of theater school where we really could play and kind of like work through the emotional process of the scenes. And the fact that like Annette, sir, sir, is game to do something like that too. And like, it was really beautiful and it was really helpful and useful. And then when we got there on the day, Don was so respectful and wonderful too. And also being like, let's not rehearse this to death. Let's just talk about anything we feel like we want to talk about. Then you guys will get in the car and go. Um, and I loved wearing the wig. I loved it. I cut bangs right after we finished. <laughs> for another, I cut them for another project. Okay. But I was trying on that one wig. Still, like, you're still retaining Amy. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Young, I'm tapping into younger Amy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the end of that episode is also really great for you. But we have another revelation about Amy and the suicide note. Um, and then the way you process that revelation too, when everyone thinks it's the note is from Joy. Um, and this is right after Brooke calls her, her an emotional chaos Cinco. So how did you prepare for that scene? That scene, I feel like it was my touchstone throughout the filming of the whole series. I would reread that scene constantly just to, ta I felt like, because it really is um, the most vulnerable that we see Amy maybe in the whole show in front of her whole family. These things have been revealed about her, it, not by choice, you know, and she has to sort of make the decision in that moment to own up to that. And she's very raw emotionally. She's had this whole other emotional journey that sort of doesn't even have to do with her, <laughs> you know, in thinking, in thinking that her mother was dead and in, 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 in uh, you know, feeling remorse for another family who's a very empathetic character. Um, but yeah, that scene, you know, we block shot the show and I just feel like I had that scene for like two months before we shot it. And I would just read it every night. And even after we shot it, I would often recall it and think about certain things that Amy says in the scene, because they're just, it's telling you everything you need to know about who that character is, how she feels about her family, where she thinks she fits into the family. So a lot of the time, there's actually like a line from that scene that got cut from the final uh, version, but but there was a line that Dawn would come up and we would, she would sort of like say it to me as our little touchstone for the character in shooting scenes beyond that. And it was really helpful. Oh, why did it get cut? I don't know. Probably that monologue was too long. It went too on long. and on. You know? it, was, it was like when you, when you <laughs> finally speak. Great line about Amy. It was, uh, it was about ahead. Amy feeling like a manatee in a <laughs> sea of sharks, you know, and it's like hearkening to like, a, maybe it was too funny. I have no idea why that moment got cut, but it, it's like, that's, that is Amy. Like she loves the manatees. She's a manatee. Her family are sharks. They got to keep moving. They want to get ahead. They're all teeth. Like, and she just wants to bob along, you know? Maybe the metaphor was too much for, for them. <laughs> it was too much for them, but it was spot on for me. For character yes. work, it was very helpful. <laughs> I mean, I do like, you know, the simplicity in what Amy says, because she, she just, she's so defined when she finally speaks. And she says, I'm not an emotional sinkhole. I'm different and I'm honest. I'm doing everything I can to find our mom, which is more than you can do, which is like pretty much a mic drop moment for her. Totally. Well, again, even though everyone questions her methods and they are a little. She's well-intentioned. She is well-intentioned. She actually is the only one who's like actively trying to do anything. Everybody else is sort of like, I guess we'll just wait and see. So she is active in that way. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Versus the siblings who are not doing anything, but they want to kind of point to Amy's life in general as a disaster which is fair yeah that this is why she's the brave one you see they all think she's exactly. a joke and she's not doing anything so <laughs> well I uh, <laughs> talked to Jake Lacey a couple of weeks ago and I asked him this so I'll, I'll ask you too but I asked him when it's another character's episode if he played Troy any differently like um if he treated him from like that character's uh subjective view of Troy and he said he didn't because he felt like that was more in the editing. 
So did you play Amy any differently in another character's episode? Like lean into her flakiness a little bit more or anything? No, I don't think I played the character differently. Um, I agree with Jake that that's sort of like, that's one of those things that you have to sort of know it in your actor brain, mm -hmm. but then not play it, I guess. I mean, but I will say, I do think in terms of, um, in terms of, <laughs> well, we're talking about actor brain. <laughs> I do think that there was uh, a, a, a way that we sort of moved as this amorphous blob and like, all the actors in the show, I was aware that there was this way that we were sort of like giving one character the spotlight, then us taking the spotlight. Like I, I it was subconscious. Actors, like, the, sort of, or even in a conscious way, but just as actors in the way that we were supporting each other as actors. That day that we were shooting in the hospital, everybody was like, I don't know, giving me, do you know what I mean? They're sort of like, today's your day. Like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, giving you space or helping with this like and it was just as fun to have days like in episode five where we shot the scene that's a big blowout fight between Sam and Jake and Annette gets involved and I mean Essie and I are basically spectators in that in the corner the whole time and we were honestly we had chills and we were just holding each other the whole time and like <laughs> tearing up it was so fun to watch the other actors act but it was I, I thought it was a really beautiful it is a really beautiful part of working with an ensemble that sometimes it's your moment to take the spotlight and other times it's your moment to support the other actors. And that came very naturally to all of us yeah. as a group, which I think And I, and so I think nice. the, the format of the show really lends itself to that because every character gets their own mm -hmm. spotlight and you get the, t the two timelines too. Like even though Joy is not around in the present, you get the past moments with her and the family together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was a lot to keep track of. <laughs> what is this the present? Is this the past? <laughs> You're like if Joy's yeah, around, months is not that much of a long time. <laughs> so between past and present, <laughs> yeah, it's not like should we have totally different hairstyles? Yeah, it's not two thousand eight. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, well, I know you I took. I think we played the character the same way. Mm -hmm. all yeah. Because how do you play someone else's perspective? You know yeah because you have to be true to who she is so, but like so like they like yeah. like brooke might see her as like a joke and a flake so they'll they'll cut around yeah. that yeah yeah but it's sort of like yeah exactly you have to just be true to the character at all times and whatever glimpse you're catching you're gonna see from that character's point of view their reaction to it and that colors what you think of the other yeah. characters i think more than us sort of trying to play them differently yeah for sure uh, well, I know you took tennis lessons, but you have said you were, you were not very good. So how not very good were you? <laughs> you know, I honestly think I was a little hard on myself. Like okay. I was pretty good. I'm certainly so much better now at doing anything physical than I was when I was a kid, a teenager in my twenties, pretty much anything pre-glow. I was worse. I know. Cause I was like, I felt like glow should have prepped you for this. <laughs> Totally. And it does. Cause I, cause I more just have uh, an openness and a confidence where if in the past, I would have been like, I'm not athletic and I don't know how to do that. And now I'm sort of like, I actually can pick things up. <laughs> I've, I've learned um, that I do have the ability. So I went into it super confident and it was fun. It just, it's a, it's a tough sport. It does just take time. So I actually think I picked it up sort of naturally, but as you get into the nitty gritty of it, you're like, could I, in in four weeks, could I learn how to be a pro tennis player, like at the level of the Delaney's, like actually playing a match? No, I couldn't. I could, I could certainly run and hit the ball over the net, but it was very hard to hit the ball to an exact destination. That was tricky. So for filming, that was problematic. But it's kind of fitting. So I for did have anyway. to just learn choreography. But it was less about like I was so terrible and more just that like we had a long way to go with me having never played tennis ever. I, I to, like trying to look yeah, to to good. like be able to like play a full match and like look like yeah. you know, you were like a junior or pro or um but it's also fitting for Amy <laughs> because her heart was never in tennis. So totally, totally. There's this is where the book also came in handy. I mean, not with tennis, but um 
there are so many details about the characters in the book that you just don't have time to get into every inch of that uh, in the span of a television show. But Amy choked a lot in tennis. That's her thing. And they talk about it a lot in the books. So, like that's something that I can just fold in internally and also be like, I can't look, play. that's yeah, what there I'm you go. <laughs> now. Yeah, I could be better at tennis, but I'm sort of choking the way that Amy's choking. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's an actor choice. There you go. <laughs> It was an actor choice. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't want it. I didn't want to be good. Yeah. Um, well, lastly, uh, last time we talked, I asked about the community movie and a lot of things happened <laughs> between then. Um, so what's the yeah. update now? Donald Glover said a couple of weeks ago that it's not his schedule holding it up. <laughs> I don't think it's Donald's schedule holding it up. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's other people's schedules. Mm. Um, we're not joking. I know that because the media does really make it. They put it's like every, every time there's shoulder. a comment, it's like headline, <laughs> headline news. I know, I know. But it really is unfair because we're all working, you guys. <laughs> Everybody's working. I mean, so uh, yes, there are, there's just a lot of schedules to handle and there's some other stuff that needs to be figured out. It somehow feels, I thought we were getting close and now it feels further than ever again, but maybe we'll shoot it soon. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. We'll see. Well, can't soon. wait to see that. Fingers uh, yes, fingers crossed. Um, it was great speaking to you again. Thanks so much for your time and congratulations on the show again. Thank you. Great to see you too. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.